when, uh, when we're doing these directional derivatives, um, turns out a nice uh, <coughs> little result here that we can uh, talk about is the maximum rate of change uh, that you can have for a directional derivative. Um, <coughs> so directional derivative, so we're talking about the derivative in the direction of u <coughs> of a particular function f that's computed by gradient of f del f <coughs> dot that with the u and then vector going the direction up. From previous discussion, we also know another uh, or a equivalent expression for the uh, dot product. Remember it, um, if you've got u dot v, um, maybe I should use u, but if you've got u dot v, <coughs> if you do the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the uh, cosine of theta, we looked at that, That's those things are equivalent. So this magnitude times magnitude times cosine of theta, where theta, theta is the angle between u and v. Well, we can do the same thing here. <clears throat> Since we've got the dot product of two vectors, this directional derivative would also equal then the magnitude of the gradient vector times the magnitude of the unit vector times cosine of theta, where again theta is the angle between uh, the gradient vector and the unit vector, right? Well, <clears throat> this simplifies even further here because what do we know about this? That's a unit vector. What would the magnitude of a unit vector be? By design, the unit vector is one unit long. So this equals one, and so this doesn't that mean simplifies down to this. So the directional derivative in the direction of u <coughs> vector u is uh, another way we could compute it would be the magnitude of f times the cosine of theta. Now that by uh, usually we don't know that angle so that that's not going to be an easier way to compute it. Um, <coughs> but what it allows us to talk about is, let's think about what would be the maximum we could get out of this directional. What is the maximum value for <coughs> the directional derivative? Well, it all hinges on this. Cosine theta. Because we're taking this times the cosine of theta, remember, cosine of theta ranges between negative one and positive one. So basically, for just about any angle, we're talking some num some decimal number could be uh, converted to that. Some decimal number. However, the maximum value I could get out of this, wouldn't it be when cosine theta is one? That would be the maximum I could get out of this because in all other cases, I'd be taking this times some decimal number, 0.9 or 0.7. The maximum value I'm going to get out of this is when cosine <coughs> is uh, when cosine theta equals 1. All right, well, there's a couple of ramifications because of that. If the maximum is going to occur when the cosine theta is 1, what does that make the maximum value? Magnitude times 1. The maximum value is going to be this right here, isn't it? Because the maximum is going to come out when cosine theta is 1. So the maximum value is the magnitude of the gradient. that's the maximum value a directional derivative can have, okay? All right, now, the other thing that this means, okay, 
So if cosine of theta is 1, what does that mean about theta? Well, one of the values of theta that would make that uh, be 1 is 0. Theta is 0. What's theta? Theta is between the angle between the gradient vector and the unit vector. So you got your gradient vector and then you got your unit vector. Well, if the angle, and this is the angle. So if the angle is zero, what does that mean about the two vectors? You got your gradient vector and then you got your unit vector, right? They're, they're going in the same direction. So the maximum occurs, <clears throat> so this is the maximum value of the directional derivative and the direction of that maximum value is the direction of your gradient vector. In other words, it's the vector itself. Okay. I mean, you can <clears throat> you can have a lot of a lot of vectors in that direction, but you hopefully get what we mean there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, with that in mind. <clears throat> So we're talking about the maximum um, directional derivative. That's what that means. Well, we just talked about the maximum directional derivative is uh, the maximum value of that is the magnitude of Our gradient vector, <clears throat> right? What we just talked about. So, what is the gradient vector here? <clears throat> well, the gradient vector is just again the partials put together in a vector form, if you will. So, what is that? What are the directional derivatives here? Well, we got a little for x. We got a little product rule, don't we? Uh, one times e to the x y plus x times the derivative of e to the x y would be e to the x y times the derivative of the power, which is just y. The y is fixed. So. And then <coughs> the uh, partial of f with respect to y. Well, the x is just a fixed amount number value. Um, and then we got the uh, e to the xy again. So it would be e to the xy, <clears throat> and now we're doing the derivative with respect to y, so the uh, derivative of the power would be x. So let's see, okay, clean that up. e to the xy plus xy, e to the xy, comma, x squared, e to the xy. Well, the maximum rate of change, and we're talking about at the point one two now. <clears throat> so, our, if we uh, do our gradient at one two, uh, what's that going to be? E 
to the second plus one times two, it'll be two e to the second, comma x is one, so e squared, I do that right? e squared, oh, three e squared, comma e squared. Believe that? So that's the, uh, that's the gradient evaluated at our particular point one, two. So the maximum rate of change <clears throat> yeah, equals the uh, directional derivative. I mean, the maximum directional derivative equals the magnitude of our gradient uh, vector here. So the magnitude of this thing, well, you do those things square, the sum of those squares. What is that? 3e e to the fourth plus e to the fourth, that's 4 e to the fourth, square root, so it'll be 2e squared. So that's going to be the maximum, the very largest rate of change that we can have at this particular uh, point. <clears throat> Now the other thing, uh, what's the uh, direction of the maximum rate of change? <coughs> well, the direction turned out would be the direction of the vector, so. Uh, <coughs> Direction is the direction of the gradient vector. All right, because we saw that when the angle we got, that's our gradient in our unit vector, it turns out when the angle there is zero, so yeah, when you got the gradient and the uh, unit vector going the same direction, so whatever the direction of the gradient is. Um, which is just the vector itself right here. So that'd be three e squared, e squared. You don't have to unitize it, because that gives you the direction. <clears throat> Does that make sense? All right. Questions or concerns on that? <clears throat>